This may be arguably, at least in my opinion, one of the very best guitars Martin makes, period. We're looking at the authentic D28 1937. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast that we will eventually record two episodes for wherever you get your podcast. It's called the <laughs> Fretboard Confessional. Yes, that was, yeah, we're going to do some episodes. Yeah, we shall we, see. Yeah. So, uh, very cool video, very cool part of our job to get to play a guitar like this. You know, we play really nice guitars kind of on the regular. Um, but, you know, we have these on order when they come in their retreat. And um, what I said at the outset, I, I really believe, I think these authentics may be the best stuff Martin is capable of producing. I mean, that's a big kind of loaded statement, but they're, they're really, really good guitars. Yeah, you know, once you get into this range, you're kind of competing with the kind of D45 and mm -hmm. custom shop stuff. Um, definitely not as blingy. No. I mean, some custom shop stuff, yeah, you can go blingy, but compared to a D45, there's a little bit of a price difference, but it's kind of in the same range, and I don't know. It's very understated. You're not paying for bling. What you're paying for in this particular case is a combination of things. It's a focus on the vintage aspect of Martin's production, and with this these latest iterations, it is aged. It's kind of like what Fender started with relicking and what Gibson's doing with the Murphy Lab. Um, it's not all beat up. What it yeah. does provide is a feel um, and somewhat of a look of a guitar that's been well-loved, not beat up. Um, and that's combined with the feature set that really works to bring about the best sound of the guitar and to give it a vintage tone. Um, now, we should talk about kind of at the onset. So this is a authentic 1937 D28 and if you are new to Martin, or if you're not too familiar with the history, it has herringbone, it's scalloped bracing. A, new, a modern D28 doesn't have that. A modern deluxe D28 does. It's, I think it's really confusing. But the bottom line that you should know is the D28 historically had those things. At some point it went away. At some point they decided we'll bring back some of this stuff in a different model called the HD28. And that's why D28s kind of get confusing. But this is of 1937 lore. Yep. And it's really cool. A lot of the things I like about this range is VTS mm -hmm. treatment. So Vintage Tone System is the Tor Faction treatment that Martin does in order to age the wood and give you an open sound that's more vintage authentic, which this has. Mm -hmm. The low gloss vintage finish. Which is the best. I just, that, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I've likened it to like a semi-gloss. It has reflection. It's not flat. Yeah. Um, I like that you're having to like wipe off the off gassing. <laughs> it's a good sign. So, so sign normal that it just on these. came out. Yeah. Um, so if you hit it with light, you can see reflection. I can see Cooper's hand reflecting off here, but it's not super glossy. It's very thin. It's very resonant. Um, I love the long saddle that's glued in, the hide glue construction. I like little things like the fact that the neck is actually genuine mahogany instead of select hardwood. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, Always a good sign. One of the unique things about what they're doing with these is the selection of tone woods um, and the body. So this features VTS Adirondack bracing or mm -hmm. Adirondack top, mm -hmm. um, which is historically accurate. That's what they were all made with. Historically, you would have had Brazilian rosewood back in the day for obvious CITES reasons and regulations. Uh, that's not the case here, but we've gone with a uh, Guatemalan rosewood is what they've chosen. Which is great, which uh, I really dig. And it's pretty, but it's got a great sound. It's kind of their premium rosewood offering, you know? Yeah, Guatemalan rosewood, you know, it's a Central American rosewood, very, in some ways, it's similar to its cousins and Honduras rosewood and Brazilian rosewood, obviously. They share a lot of traits, and a lot of it is going to be nice, rich, deep bases, and those really, like, chimey high ends with insane overtones. So, yeah. I mean, this is, <clears throat> in a lot of ways, kind of a quintessential D28. But yeah. talk about the aging on it a bit. 
Yeah, I I like it because it's not uh, it's not way too heavy duty. It's not like the nitros worn through to bare wood. Right. The biggest thing I think would be the checking, mm -hmm. especially you know on the top you can see a lot of checking and it's hard to pick it up in the camera, but there is checking looking at this angle. Little spots of wear here and there um, that kind of mimic you know pick and where you're resting your the saddle and really everything. Dirty. Dirty saddle. Um, it's a good band name. Dirty saddle. <laughs> That's uh, they're playing at the CMAs. All right, but um, yeah, the aging is tasteful, especially you know on the back. It's not, it's not like you're seeing big buckle rash or gouges right. or anything. It's it's clean. Um, it's just kind of got the the wear that you'd expect from a really well preserved, you know, old school D28. That evidently had a refret because the fretting on it is Yeah, fretting, <laughs> frets are not aged. Uh, worn uh, side on the neck a little bit. Yeah. Um, aged tuners. It's another good band name. Aged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I love the, the mini pearl tag. Uh, you know, just let's follow the hip hop trends and just leave that on the guitar yeah. always. Yeah. Um, Feels great. The we've done the 39s on the channel, yeah. which now the 37 VTS age that was NAM 2023. Um, neck does not feel as hardcore fat. It's yeah. still a thick neck, and we showed you the D18 version of this that has since left the shop. That hopefully it's not too long, but I'm assuming it's going to be a while till we get another March. one in. I was told March. Good, um, but yeah, the neck feels great. It's Definitely chunky, got the V sort of kind Softy. of kind of vibe to yeah. it, but it's not like a baseball bat necessarily. It's not a super hard V. It's comfortable, mm -hmm. and I like it. Um, it just feels great. You know, I think the most obvious question that a lot of people ask about the authentics is about the truss rod. Yeah, so let's address the elephant in the room. Does it have a truss rod? No. Nope. Doesn't have a truss rod. You don't need one. Right. Well, so here's here's what that does. It does have support in the neck. So it's not like it's just a chunk of mahogany, mm -hmm. okay? What it lacks is adjustability. So made the way it is, I don't have concerns. I would buy one. Let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that, uh, you know, even one of our guys, Blake, was talking about, like, there's a hesitancy there. Um, would, would I buy one? I would buy one. Um, I think they're set up perfectly out of the factory, as they should be, you know, um, it, I think it plays great, and there's nothing in regards to the relief of the neck that I would want to change, and that's really what you would need in the truss rod. Um, long term, I don't think you'd have issues with the relief changing, um, and there's a lot of vintage guitars that usually, like when they need work done on them and they're 80 years old, it's neck reset stuff. I mean, sometimes yeah. there's, there's bowing or whatever, but usually the grand majority of them have issues with like the neck angle needing to be done and that has nothing to do with the truss rod anyway. So yeah, it wouldn't be a, a hindrance to me. They do make a custom shop version of the Authentics that add the truss rod, which I do like for other reasons, primarily because they don't do a 0028 or triple 0028 yeah. uh, outside of that uh, treatment currently. Um, but yeah, so would you have any hesitation? Well, I wouldn't because it, it feels great, and also I'm not necessarily the type to go messing around a bunch with my truss rods. Um, and Good band name. Messing oh. around with my truss rods. Uh, <laughs> good album, the, the first album, album title. Yeah, there you go. With <laughs> um, you know, we... Welcome to the stage. The 8-tuners with their hit. Messing, messing around, around with my truss rods. rods. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, if Martin does not believe that they need one to make a serviceable and mm -hmm. well-playing guitar. I trust those guys. And the action is perfect, feels great, sounds great. I wouldn't do anything to this guitar. I'd be lucky to own this guitar. So yeah, I would not um, be scared by that. And you know, you'd always just <laughs> pop it off yourself and just sand it down or yeah, something. Just, just, you know, just get a good bit of leverage it comes um, out. Yeah, there's a reason, I mean, I think there's, yeah, you can trust the people at Martin to uh, believe in their own design and not need to give you an adjustable truss rod. Yep. But, yeah. Well, all that aside, yeah. it sounds incredible. Every time they arrive, they instantly become one of the best guitars we have in the shop. So forget listening to us about it. You should hear this guy play it. Check it out.
now that I have it, let me tell you what I really think. No, I, this is one of the best guitars in the shop, and it just drives. It's just, they're phenomenal. To your point, I would love to own one of these. Like, yeah. I've kind of been lusting yeah. after, which, you know, Father, forgive me, but yeah, uh, fantastic guitar. Going back to the truss rod point, I will say this. Because you lack adjustability in the relief of the neck, which is perfect right now, if you change string gauges, um, then yeah, you would need adjustability and that doesn't exist. If you're looking for a guitar that straight out of the box, you can play it and it sounds amazing and you're not gonna do anything with it, then this guitar would be for you and you would probably love and cherish and appreciate every little bit of it. If you are looking for a guitar that you're going to like, you know, check with the you know micrometer like little things or you would be bugged by something like the wear that they've replicated on this guitar then you should look for something else from martin like a modern deluxe or something that's you know a high-end guitar that can serve you well but it's just for a different customer yeah for me shockingly this is what i would pick out of out most of, of their kind of the full i mean so you got d28 hd28 d28 modern deluxe you got authentics you got custom shop in terms of 28s, not necessarily. Right. I mean, you got all kinds of dreadnoughts. I think this is for the person that one would love to have a real 37 or a you know pre-war Martin that is uh, not five high five well, so, to six figures. So let's yeah. talk about the value proposition here. By the way, we 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 kind of skipped over. They've talked about and didn't go into a lot of detail the fact that this has a different profile on the body. Yeah because it's based upon the actual 37 and they've gone back to those examples and whatnot. And so the body on this is a little different along with the bracing and everything mm -hmm. else. I love the solid wood bracing on this side. Like there's, every time I just kind of pour over these guitars, there's all these little details that are amazing. But how much do you think a 1937 D28 in this kind of like really good condition would go for? I mean, well into six figures. Probably so. Now, well, I'll say this. Uh, there was one that got shared with us the other day that I think was a 45 of this era, maybe a little younger, and I think it was 150K. Yeah. So this is cheap. This is a cheap this guitar. Is, I mean, you can get so many of these for that. <laughs> um, did you happen to see that Emerald City video with the first D28? No, I missed that one. They got a great channel. Yeah. If I mean, I'm sure if you watch our channel, you watch other guitar channels, you probably know them. It's probably gotten uh, recommended to you. They had the first D28 that was ordered, 14 fret, 1934, and Jason Momoa bought it. Of course he did. And they, in the video, bring it out to him and he plays. It's, it looks like it's seen, you know, almost 100 well, years I mean, of play. We need start money to it buy that guitar. <laughs> very cool, but I can only imagine that that was well, well into six figures, yeah. you know. Um, but something like this for, Martin history nerds, which there are a lot out there that like their guitars being mm -hmm. as OG to spec as possible. This is what they make that satiates that need. Mm -hmm. um, and also for somebody that just wants the pinnacle of woods, the sound, the treatment, the construction, um, this is so cool. And if you don't dig it, like Chris said, Modern Deluxe is great and just a totally different vibe. Yeah. Um, and custom. You can piece together things that you like from both and it will help you. You know, I think it's a really good, speaking of a completely different channel, um, you know, we're like you guys, we consume tons of guitar content on YouTube. I've really enjoyed Gibson's uh, The Collection stuff mm -hmm. and Mark Agnesi was with Jason Isbell and he was talking about his electrics and also his acoustics and, you know, he's had a D18, you know, that was his signature model so he really loves his Martins. But one thing that I've heard from a lot of guys that are professional musicians, have their own signature models, have a lot of vintage gear, is that they'll take these custom shop recreations of old stuff on the road because they're just so good. Yeah. And they don't have to risk their historically super expensive and impossible to replace guitars. Yeah. And that's such a testament right there, I think, to the quality that manufacturers are putting into these uh, these models. So Yeah. Yeah, I want this guitar. He wants this guitar. We say that with all these uh, authentics, but it's true. Because they're all good, yeah. So if you want this guitar, you can have it. Um, you just have to exchange some funds or ch cheaper goats or something. But uh, you can do it on our website, um, which is? 
alamomusic.com. Not the goats part. We haven't added that feature yet. Goat trade. All right. <laughs> the, so, yeah, the goat trade. How many goats to an authentic? We haven't done the math yet. But uh, no, if you go to alamomusic.com, you can see this guitar in all of its glory. You can chat with someone, see all the specs, um, and decide if this is the right guitar for you or if something else is. And we'll help you through that process. That's what we pride ourselves on, is kind of talking through you know, what you're wanting to play, what you really like, and what would uh, most likely work best for you to find the guitar to fit your needs. So yep. that's what we do. And if they're new to the channel, what should they do? Cooper? You're going to want to subscribe to the channel, all right? Yeah. And you're turning the notifications on because unlike our podcast, we do put out like three of these a week. Yeah. And podcasts, you know, it's kind of... Three of those a year. Three of those a year. <laughs> but they're good. They're really good. Um but yeah, the videos, we keep them coming. All right, there's no slowing down there. So turn on your notifications because we might get some really cool and hard to get from Martin and you'll want to know exactly when it comes in so you can snag it. Cool. Well, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.